We've been teaching on a series called Reigning in Life. We're supposed to reign over life, reign in life. We're not supposed to be under circumstances. Can you say amen? Now, I know circumstances arise. Things, problems occur. But that should not affect you spiritually. Truly, it shouldn't. Amen. Because as long as we are in this world, Jesus said this, as long as you are in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But fear not, little flock, I have overcome the world. Now, the Bible tells us right now, you and I are in Christ. That means as long as we stay focused on him, walking in him, my daughter calls it the bubble. My, my son-in-law and daughter call it walking in the bubble. As long as we stay in fellowship with God, we are protected as well. And last week, we found out we were raised with Christ in heavenly places, aren't we? So when you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you're transported right up into your position in heavenly places. Now, our position is in Christ, and Christ is already seated down. He's sitting down at the right hand of the Father God, his Father. That means he's in full authority and tells us in Matthew 28, all authority, both in heaven and earth, is given to me. Now you go in my name. Wow, that's a lot of authority. So we're going to call this today the spirit-led believer. The spirit-led believer. You see, we're all believers. We love God, amen? But many people are in different growth stages. Some are young babes in the Lord. Some are growing up. They become adolescent, you know, before the teens, before the terrible teens. And then some become teenagers in the Lord. Really, pastor, is this really true? Yes, we all grow up into him, don't we? And then we become young adults and then finally seasoned Christians. Now, I do have a teaching on that. If you want to see how to relate your p position in Christ as you are right now, to what stage of position are you a child, an, an infant, an adolescent, a preteen? Are you a teenager? Are you a pre-adult? Are you a full seasoned adult? The idea is for all of us to be mature in Christ. Can you say amen? All right. Pastor, where do you think I am in the affairs of life? I don't know, but go to God and ask him. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. We're going to have fun also with you. So we're going to teach you how to be led by the Spirit. Now, there's one thing to know something general. Hello. But there's importance to know specifics if you're going to be involved. Can you say amen? We can have a general idea of Scripture, knowing there's an Old Testament, how it functions, and a New Testament, how it functions. But we need specifics of how we can walk within the realm of the kingdom. And those specifics come by being led by the Spirit of God. All right, so we're going to go up. We're going to read our scripture. We're going to got three of them. And you know these ones. I like to use scripture over and again till they become a part of you. And so Colossians chapter 2, look at this one. I love it. How many here believe the word of God? Do you believe it means what it says? Do you believe it can do what it says? Do you believe that God and the word are one? In the beginning was the word, yes. So Colossians 2 verse 9 says, For in him, ah, that's you and I, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We have full access of God in his fullness. Can you say amen? Wow. Then it says, and you are complete in him. Well, pastor, I don't feel complete. There you go. It's not by feelings. But according to scripture, we are complete in him. He's got a whole entire completeness for us. And if we walk with him, he'll bring us into that reality. Someone say amen. amen. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Principality is the Greek word archon or archangel. It's the highest of angels. And powers means authorities. Okay. 
Go to Philippians 1.8 in our scripture back behind me. It says, being confident of this very thing, that he has begun a good work in you. Ah, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So you're under construction. That's why pastor, Pastor Linda, myself, and other ministers try to keep you focused on Christ. Why? Because he's taking you in, into completeness. Hello? He sees completeness. You have completeness printed in your spirit. God's in your spirit, man. You're a new creation, and he's got a blueprint of completeness in there. If you don't believe me, the scripture says, take off the old man and put on the new man was made after the image of the fullness of him. So again, a lot of times we have to lift up our eyes, focus on things above. And let's drop down or, or go down one more page. Philippians 2 verse 13. I love this one. For it is God. Now where's God at work at? Everyone point at yourself and say, God lives in me. God's at work in me. All right. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Now, folks, if you are a parent, been a parent, especially as grandparents, we love our grandchildren. It's something just special to see them and watch them grow, our children to see them and watch them grow. There's something holy and something awesome about that. And we want every one of them to turn out right, you know, and, and to be blessed of God, don't we? So we understand how our Father is. That's how he wants about us, how, how for us to be full of good pleasure. It's good pleasure to see your, your child happy and excited. It's, good, it's my good pleasure to see my children loving God. I have family that loves God. Linda, all of her children loves God. They love God. Ah, oh, what a joy to be expressed that to you. Now, we live in a broken world. So our goal is to get our children, our loved ones, our, to bless them and to pray for them so they can fall in love with the same God we have fallen in love with. Amen. Are you ready to get in this? All right. I, I'm getting ahead of myself with my words. All right. So, amen. The spirit-led believer. Please, let's, let's just go through it. I want you, as we do this, I want you to open your Bible to John 16 and just kind of put your finger there. And for the rest of us, blessings to you, church family. Today, we're going to share on how a child of God should be led by the spirit of God as they follow God in their walk. Amen. We have the word of God, which gives us God's instructions, both Old Testament and New Testament, how to live and be with God. But there are general instructions, not putting anything down. And they only give us ideas to follow him. Especially if we're going to follow him effectively, know what to do for us and our families, what choices to make during the day. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us and to help us, to prompt us along the way. Could you put your hands and say, amen. What business deals to do? What friends to make? Hello? Amen. All of us. So we don't waste time. I believe God loves you that much. The word of God is really complete. It totally is complete. It's everything that a child of God can need within the word of God. It has no flaws. If they could find a flaw, if you can chase your history down, back in the days in the Library of Congress years and years ago, there was a challenge against the word of God to find a flaw or a contradiction. They haven't found it yet. When it's rightly translated, there's no contradiction. And that's a miracle. So there's a reward if you can. It's been there since, what, 1923 or 1918? I can't tell you. You can look it up, though. And I encourage you that, you know, if, you, if there's a flaw in the Bible, try to find one. Meanwhile, let God guide you through it and show you the beauty. So it's complete. It's beautiful. Can you say amen? 
But we need the specifics. How to do, can you say amen? What not to do, can you say amen? How to follow the inward witness and the promptings of God. So the word has two testaments, and an Old Testament and a New Testament. These are what we call different dispensations. Or, let me explain, the way in which God deals with man. There are seven of them, seven of them in the Bible, but we won't go through them. The Old Testament is a dispensation under the law to point people to Christ. Because mankind, remember, they think we can save ourselves. We cannot. So the Old Testament's dispensation and statement is, you need a Messiah which is to come. And in the New Testament, it says Messiah has come and given us a new covenant. Now, by the Spirit, we are to walk with God through life because with our Messiah has come, Jesus has come. Can you say amen? And we look forward to him coming again. It's a simple gospel, but we sure can muddy the waters, and we don't want to do that. So we need to know how to apply both Old and New Testaments, how to realize a personal walk with God, and that we're in one plan. Everyone say one plan. It's a rescue plan called redemption. Jesus came to rescue the rest of humanity that would choose him off of this planet, which is a prison, until he renovates it. So the only way, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, anybody that way, that situation, never left the planet. This is an eye-opener, but you need to understand. Well, where did they go? They were held captive before Jesus came into either one of two places. Everyone say, tell me. One place is called paradise, Abraham's bosom. You'll find it in the Gospels. The other place was hell. Now, hell was never created for humans. It was created to punish Satan forever. Remember, he tried to take this planet a long time ago. He failed. God threw him down on the earth. The younger Dryas time. It's called the younger Dryas, where something happened and huge floods and the earth wretched and turned. We'll talk about that over lunch. That's where Satan was thrown out of heaven and all of his armies. A war in heaven, just like we read or heard about. That's what that was. We don't have a lot of details, so I don't want to try to convince you. I want to teach you what we have today. So basically, this is what Jesus said. The born-again man of God should be like the wind, didn't he? In John 3, Nicodemus, the religious Jewish person, came to Jesus and says, Look, look, I know you're from God. Can nobody can do the miracles that you do, except for God be with you. And Jesus says, no one will understand this unless you become born again. And of course, Nicodemus immediately. But Jesus says, he that's born of the Spirit, for the wind blows where it listeth. You can hear the sound thereof. Can't tell where it comes or where it goes. So is every man born of the Spirit. He was talking about a life being led by the Spirit of God. There would be a time when a person has God living on the inside of them and that God is working and ordering our steps. There'll be a time where the Holy Spirit comes as our tutor to guide us and to teach us into all truth. And even through your day, even though you know your routine, the Holy Spirit has the right, and you should choose him to have the right to show you things through your daily routines. Well, I'm only walking to the kitchen. You see how we, it, we want to get in that control. I know what God wants me to do, so please get out of the way and let him do it. So I'm teaching you things that a lot of people know about, some people understand, 
but the majority of Christians have no clue that we have a personal coach and guide, a tutor, to help us, guide us, and make right and wrong, keep us from wrong decisions, to order our steps. God expected us. Oh, yeah, he set us up. I don't know about you, but a long time ago, I knew somebody set his son up, gave his son an investment of money when he was of age. And says, now, if you invest this, by the time you get to about the age 39, 40, you'll be a millionaire. What did the child do? He went out and spent it. Well, God set us up. Can you say amen? And we have a choice to either live with him, flourish with him, or go out and be like that prodigal son and spend our inheritance foolishly by living in the flesh. And I won't say that's not me. All right, so we need to be led by the Spirit to keep us out of trouble. I remember my mom and my dad. They knew I had in me this little rebellious spirit when I was a little kid. Hello. And if anybody could, Sarah, I could get into trouble at any moment. And so I was watched, I mean, you know, really well. Oh, and sure enough, did I get in trouble? Oh, sure. My dad got me this BB gun, and he said to the national people, make sure you don't poke anybody's eyes out. You know, so what did I do? I shot him in the leg instead. Not my dad. This kid, well, see, I find my way getting to trouble, you see. Oh, many things I could share with you. Silly things. You know, you ever toss rocks? When you throw rocks, you, you're going to hit something eventually. Anyway, so there's mischief that's born in the heart of a child, but it takes a rearing up of good godliness and a being reborn for that to be washed out of us. Can you say amen? And I say this basically because we want to cover the basic areas, these four areas. You ready? We're going to, we have a tutor and a guide. Get to know him well. It's the Holy Spirit. Two, we must be tuned up and tuned in. I added the tuned in. Thirdly, being led by the Spirit, what it really is, how to be led by the Spirit. We're going to cover that enough where you can practice it. Say amen. And then fourthly, how to be an instrument of God. We've been everybody else's instruments. We might maybe an instrument of mischief, God forbid, years ago. But how to be an instrument of God. Can you say amen? All right, number one, we have a tutor and a guide. Everyone say the Holy Spirit. See, you're way ahead of me. Let's go to John 16. Remember I said to put your finger there? I sure love you. Now, here's the thing you need to understand. You're going to hear scriptures over and over again. I wish I could plug my brother, your your son, in, in with the gospel at night, playing on a recorder, just playing in his ears, all about healing and all about the word of God, and just go off to sleep that way, somehow to get the word in them. I've been praying about that. God wants us to have the word. So we know the scripture, but every time you study scripture, the Holy Spirit's there to open your eyes to something new about it. And if you don't have that ignorance to look at the scripture fresh and new every day, that won't happen as much. You'll get this yawn and you'll say, oh, I got that. I know that. I know that. Come on, I'm kind of teasing all of us. I've done that. Amen. Sit with my two Bibles on the front pew and say, okay, what's this minister got to say to me? Oh, boy, did I get in trouble for that. All right, John 16, verse 13. Now, Jesus said, I'm not leaving you comfortless. I'm going to come to you, and I said, send another comforter. Verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, now we're not talking about bad truth, garbage truth, false truth. 
We're talking about the truth that sets us free. For he will not speak on his own authority. I be the Holy Spirit. I'm great and mighty. No, his job is to point everyone to Jesus. He won't speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Remember, he's in heaven. He's all around, and he will tell you things to come. You don't have to be worried about what's coming. You get with God, and he will show you things to come. What will be your part in it? That's much better than guessing or worrying or wondering. And he will show you things to come. He will glorify me. See, he centers on us to get to Christ, be with Christ. Study the word. Always on Christ. For we will take what is mine. That's all the things that have been given. And declare it unto you. The word declare is an interesting Greek word. It means to reveal it in such a way it becomes a part of you. Say amen. And declare it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, Jesus said, I say, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So everyone say, I have an inheritance. I'm a joint heir with Christ. And in Christ, I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now, the Holy Spirit's job is to teach us how to walk in those things. Can you say amen? And that's why he's our guide, our tutor. Now, we can either tutor ourselves, let the world through circumstances tutor us, or we can let the Holy Spirit, which was sent on our behalf, to bring us into all truth and teach us how to walk in the realm of the spirit that we were first created to walk. I come to the garden alone. The garden is the spirit realm. Can you say amen? Okay, let's look at this couple of points. Point one, church, we as believers have God working in us to do his will and to mature us. Do you believe it? It's important to be directed daily by the Spirit for this to happen. Two, our Heavenly Father sent the Holy Spirit to help us, teach us, and to guide us through this life. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are in me, not just with me. Hello. We have who in us? God. Thirdly, we need to pay close attention to our instructor, especially the things that he says for us to do. It's much easier that way. We avoid a lot of mistakes. Say amen. Boy, I want to get after that. We see in the book of Peter, if we allow the virtues of God to abound out of us, add your faith, love, and love knowledge, and love kindness, all of these things you'll find in 2 Peter. Hello? Chapter 1, he said, these things be in you and abound. You shall neither be barren nor unfruitful, always abounding in the will of God. Say amen. And then five, fifth point. Understand this. We are to be guided into the way. Who's the way and the truth uh, and the life? And here's another thing you might not know. But the Christians in the Bible, they weren't called Christians except first in Antioch. What were they called, Pastor Kerry? The way. They were called the way. These are of the way. And the way is Jesus. He's showing us the way. He's our shepherd. He leadeth us out. Came in. He leadeth by green pastures and still waters. Not rough lives. I got to confess to you. The second from the last song is not the song I wanted to play. I, I wanted to play, if you're having a trouble with your faith, plant a seed, let it rain. I hit the wrong button. See, I choose a lot of the songs by God. And I saw that, and I said, no, it's a pretty decent song. So I'm confessing a fault to you. All right. Go with me to the scripture, still on the same point, Second Peter chapter 1. We're going to quickly read this, but only a portion of it. Chapter 1, 2 Peter, 5 through 11. So here Peter's saying he's about ready to go home to be with God. 
but also for this very reason. Give all diligence. Get after your walk with God. Add to your faith excellence, virtue. And to your being excellent, knowledge. You can shine, but you better know something. And to your knowledge, self-control. Don't get out of control because knowledge puffs up. Charity edifies. Knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance. Don't quit. Just keep on plowing through. Remember, you're in a tank. It might not feel like it, but if you'll close your mouth and believe God and trust him. And to perseverance, godliness. Godliness is something God makes you look like, not something you look like. In other words, when somebody walks with God for a while, really, you can tell, can't you? They, there's something godly about them. They're not trying to do a put on. They're not trying to be something. They are something. They're just spending time with God like you are. And the godliness just shines out. Can you say amen? And godliness. Amen. He said, for these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you always bear fruit, and you won't always be in a dry place. Why, Lord, do I feel dry? Why do I feel that your, your prayer and your ears are far from my prayers? Listen, buddy, you've been pray, reading the Old Testament too much. Jesus is in your heart. You're looking up and wondering if he's out there, and yet he's walking in your heart. Didn't you accept Jesus in your heart? Well, I did. Well, why don't you get with it and believe what the Word says? And don't be caught up in this religious ideas. Some will say, oh, pastor. And verse 10 says, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you will never stumble. In other words, you won't be bumbling and stumbling over the word. You won't be wondering if God loves you one day and is with you the next. Hello? For an entrance of the word of God will be supplied to you. This is telling us the Holy Spirit wants to show you everything that was Jesus' and everything he came for us to have. Everything. Now, it's going to take you and I paying very close attention to the Holy Spirit for him to open our eyes like we need to see. It's okay. Let me encourage you. I haven't got there totally yet either. But there's so many wonderful things and glorious things. you got to pursue him. The Holy Spirit's job is to guide you and keep your feet from stumbling. And if you do, the angels will bear thee up. This is kingdom in its operation. But God needs a line out. Yes, you're going to go to work Tomorrow, it's Monday. Also, election. And in you going to work, have you made room to ask God to get involved and then order your steps so that he can maybe ask you to do a little thing here or pray a little way there that you could cover something more than just what you always do. This is really a kind of being led by the Spirit. Now, in all of us, we have what's called the witness God in us. And when we're reading the Bible, we hear something we're supposed to do. The witness, God goes off in us. And the Bible says in Romans 8 that we have this witness in us that lets us know that we are walking with God, children of God. Say amen. All right, so let's go to point two. We must be tuned up and tuned in. I want to tell you, years ago at the turn of the century, there was a guy named, um, let's see if I can remember his name. He started at Zion, Illinois. He was a born-again, spirit-filled man way back in, in the turn of the century. That was his name. And he was a friend of a lot of all these old people that I had to study in college. But he had such a move of God in his life because he'd just gotten the Holy Spirit. He just felt 
poured out and the Holy Spirit got a hold of his life and he was doing what God was directing him. And guess what happened? Revival broke out. What was his name? I'll let me all remember sometime over lunch. You can look it up. Zion, Illinois was pounded by. All right. So in point two, we must be tuned in in order for the Holy Spirit to guide us. Can you say amen? amen. If we have a beautiful guitar instrument, maybe it's even a six string, maybe a, a 12 string. If it's not tuned, it's not going to vibrate properly. Well, Satan knows that, and we're going to talk a little scientifically here. You have a tune. Linda has a tune. BJ has a tune. We all have a certain signature of God in our heart. And when we're running right with God, it's making music. It's producing a tone and a tune. Now, um, even, even something as simple as a nightmare can get you out of tune at night. You wake up sweating and go, that's the purpose. Remember, Satan hates you and your walk with God. So he's constantly trying to pull you away from that. I'm too busy to pray. I can't go to church. I don't, you know, I feel sad. Go to church and get healed and get that double off you. That's exactly what that is. It's a double. Depression most of the time is a devil because we think of ourselves too much. And the devil, you give permission for the enemy to crawl in your tank. You don't want the enemy crawling in your relationship with God. Amen. Now, we must be tuned up and tuned in. So I chose to go to Matthew. I can quote it for you. This is Matthew 11. After Jesus had preached, he said, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, remember? He says, come and take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me, not about me. We can learn about Jesus and miss the personal from him. And that's why the Holy Spirit's here to give us that personal touch from him. Remember, to declare him unto us. Be tutored how to not only be with Jesus, to be like Jesus. Can you say amen? I love it. And these people you see moving in the spirit, doing the miracles, that's the key. Their focus is Christ. To please God, lift him up. Can you say amen? All you that are heavy laden, come to me, and I will give you what? Rest. First of all, this talks about you're no longer an enemy of God. Once you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are at peace with God. Can you say amen? God is not angry with your sin anymore. You've come to rest. Now, to get the rest up into our thinking, we've got to spend time with the one who has to teach us. Can you say amen? So we got to be in the word so God, the Holy Spirit, can bring the word to us so he can walk us through it so it becomes a real thing for us. You see, I can do certain things. Maybe have, I have a rhythm to me that a lot of people don't have, but God gave that to me. You know, he ha you have things that others can't do. God gave that to you. Those are special things that came with your birth. And then when you got born again, there are special gifts that come with your rebirth. Hello, can you say amen? I always used to tell my, my uh, son, you're never going to understand all the quality of all these wonderful different tastes of all these different foods. All you have is meat and potatoes all the time. You have to begin to try a few things at least to see if you like them. Then you always can say no later. Well, I think a lot of Christians are that way. They don't want, I'm not talking about you go out there and try a lot of things. I think, I think we kind of get a comfortable place with God. Nothing's ruffled and everything. And, and that's good. 
But God is saying, hey, God the Holy Spirit is saying, hey, I got more to show you. I got more things to develop in you. I want to show you a few things so you don't keep on coming against that one brick wall. You want to overcome? I'll show you how to overcome. Let me show you and walk you through it. Remember, his job is to guide us into all truth. And to know that truth, I mean, know it by experience, know that it works every time. You see, I don't even doubt. When I pray for you to be healed, I don't even doubt you won't. It's my job just to release Jesus. See, because I can't heal you. But Jesus in me can, and the Jesus in you can come up, and the two slap them hands on that infirmity and can make you whole. Hello. So I don't doubt who's in me. What happens to a lot of Christians is they're not walking with God. They're sort of following Jesus emotionally and physically trying to follow. No, 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 no. Get up in the morning, die. Say, I'm out of the way, Lord. I've cast my body over on you now. You and I are walking in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Now, I know God chose us and accepted us just the way we were. Say amen. And he didn't reject us. He accepted us just the way we were. But my God, your God, the same God, won't leave us in that condition. We're supposed to improve. We're supposed to be better at sound, better at reading our scripture, better at speaking, finding ways to be healed. You understand? Instead of sitting there and going, well, I guess this is my price and my cross to bear. Hey, let me throw in a pair of somebody's dirty underwear. Go along with that to rhyme. You're just sitting and... No, you're supposed to be better, getting better. Can you say amen? Not sitting and fermenting. Did you notice that everything that sits in this planet ferments, rots? So don't sit. The first three letters in Satan is sat. First two letters in God is go. Got it. There you go. <laughs> that was a good one. I haven't done that for a while. So, church... Jesus said, come unto me. I'm gentle. I'm lowly in heart. You'll find rest for your soul realm. You can stop striving and stop trying to be somebody. Jesus already made you somebody. Because that's a game Satan plays. You're behind. You don't know enough. You'll never do this. You, 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 you. It's always about you. Watch that. Satan's always good at taking the eyes off of God and getting them to focus on us. You know that when you get the blues because the blues are all about the yous. We bring the blues down. Don't blame chemicals. No, no. Might be a little bit, but hey, if you're up and in God, you're in, in the realm of his kingdom. So church, we grow spiritually only, as you know, in the presence of God. You meet with him every day to grow a little on the way. But to stay in the spirit of God, to be taught by the spirit of God, takes us to get tuned up, tuned in. Secondly, we call it the face-to-face -face time with God. I'm aware of you. Oftentimes we can have a conversation in passing. But to sit down and talk to you face-to-face -face is where a great exchange happens. Get it? Great exchange. Christians are being kept from a good, solid, daily, first time, face-to-face -face every morning with God. Don't you skip that. Thirdly, the enemy can't stop a spirit-led believer. You're invisible to him. Especially then, now you're directed by God. We are like the wind, hidden and invisible, only to see the effects when it blows on things. This is where a lot of Christians don't get their mouth in control because God will tell them to do something, but the, the, the project that they're going to do is going to be over a period of time. 
So what do they do? They open their mouth and talk about it and tip the devil off. Now they have extra struggles in it. No, stay like the wind. Only talk to those you know you can trust. Don't blurt things out foolishly, especially when it comes to your livelihood, finances, businesses, children, families. Can you say amen? He can't stop you because he doesn't know what you're going to do. He only remembers your old habits. Our old habits. Uh oh, Carrie's disappeared on me again. Well, he's been gone for weeks. Well, where's he been? Well, he's been with God. You know when he's with God, you can't get to him. Man, I tell you what. Well, send somebody. Have him somebody call and irritate him so we can get him back down where we can get at him. I'm not going. I'm not leaving. I like it being with the Lord. Fourthly, what are these effects of wind blowing? Signs and wonders. These signs shall follow them to believe. Remember, when we're moving in the spirit, we are shielded. Satan can't go into the spirit. He can't see in the spirit. You're like the wind in the spirit. Even though you can see yourself, you become invisible to him because God's got the control button. Uh-oh, Tina's gone again. I know where she's at. She's with her husband. We can follow him. You say, oh, whatever. I like to try with God's help to be as visible I can to the enemy and what he wants done and to be as most effective an instrument in God's hands I can. And I tell you what, the benefits and the richness that comes from that, health and strength, restoration, wisdom that is not yours, it comes out of nowhere. You know really where it comes. It just dropped, downloaded in you. I love that. Don't you love that? Listen, if you're going to stay that way, you've got to learn this next scripture, Philippians 4, 6. Don't let the enemy use anxiety or anything. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. Pastor Kerry, what's the Greek on the everything? Everything. No, come on. What's, what's the Greek? Break it down for me. Everything. And I add, especially the major things you need throughout the day. Everything by prayer and supplication. Supplication is just a simple way of saying, Lord, your word says, your word said, is, it says when you hold the word up, the word is God, right? God cannot say no to himself. So when you hold the word up and say, Father, your word says, if I ask, I shall receive according to your will. Can he say no? I was amazed to hear a brother who's been saved for years, years and years. Gets up. I let him preach for a little bit. Gets up and he says, well, I want to tell everybody that God doesn't always answer prayer. I had to took 15 minutes to find a way to make him sit down. God always answers prayer that's pray in the name of Jesus. And listen, well, how do I know God's, if it's a wrong prayer? Immediately, God will tell you, when you pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and to present this prayer, you know right away if it's right or wrong. It won't go any further. But you'll know when it's right, so you can just believe you have the petition already signed because God does not say no to his word. That's why all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. Didn't say no. I'm just waiting. I just love you guys. Are you ready? All things through prayer. Then what happens, Pastor Kerry? Then... You make your requests known to God. Why? So he can shield them. 
So we put them under the blood and answer them. Get your wishes into prayers. I wish, I wish, I wish. If only I could. If something were like that. Don't talk like that. Pray. Father, in Jesus' name, your word says. And when you don't, and you all you offer him wishes, that's good. But it just tells God you're not in the word. You're in your head too much because you're wishing. Wishings come from the head. Faith comes from the spirit. And the peace of God then will surpass all your understanding, will guard your heart and mind. Pray when you are a prayer person, your heart and mind is guarded. You're shielded. Can you say amen? And the reason why Paul talks about the armor over there in 6 and breaks it all down in Ephesians 6 is not to tell us that we got to put each piece on. No, just to tell you what those pieces are for and that Jesus is every one of those pieces. And we are in him. He's in us. We're in the tank. Can you say amen? In the spirit hidden from the enemy. Now, I don't think many Pentecostals, see, I was raised as a Pentecostal preacher, but actually, I'm just a Christian. But back in the old Pentecostal moves, they never had no revelations like that. They had their own that they held dear, that made them believe and move. God always gives his generations visions and pictures, and especially now in the New Testament, personal visions and pictures to make your faith strong towards him. Say amen. He might show you that you're going to be preaching and rebuking the devil one day. Don't you ever lose sight of that. Press on. Press on. Don't get bogged down. All right, let's go to point three. Oh, thank God. Point three is being led by the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, please. We're going to start verse 12. Christians are always talking about, I've got arthritis, and I've got this and this. Every year about this time, I catch the flu. And they talk like that, as if they owe their flesh something. Hello? Since when is it your cold? My cold. My cold. Since when is it yours? God doesn't have sickness he's going to give you. So don't call it my cold. Call it my blessing. Instead of saying somebody's sick, say so-and-so is getting healed. How come I don't see so-and-so? By his stripes, they're getting healed. Bless them instead of curse them. Don't talk about what the devil's doing as much as you can. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> God at Romans 12, I mean 8, 12. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors to the flesh, not to the flesh at all, to live according to the flesh. Say amen, someone. For if you live according to what your flesh tells you, you will die, separate from God. But if you by the Spirit put to death the deeds of your body, Lord, I lay in my body a living sacrifice, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, the Greek word for sons is the word we us. Everyone say we us. Say we us, we us, we us. And it literally means adult, mature sons of God. And literally, this is exactly what it entails. I, I don't want to talk too long. Some of my teacher friends, they go on to too much detail. It entails you that as long as you're walking in God, you have his maturity. Do you get that? Suddenly you're not just you, you are him and you. Boop! It's different. It's not your wisdom, but is his wisdom in you. Boop! You and him have become one. Now let him have control. Boo. Say man, isn't this fun? But if you live according to 
the Spirit, you'll put to death those things in your body that, and you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these become under God's control and they're under God's authority and they move like the wind out of Satan's reach like powerhouses. And that's what we see in the book of Acts. That's what you've seen in my life, in some of your life. Lay hands on the sick, the Bible says. Don't think about it. Release the power. Can you say amen? We're bringing the kingdom in earth as it is in heaven. So ta stop talking about your owies. Your guitar's out of tune. But you and I did not receive the spirit of bondage again. That's, that's Christians wanting to go back into the world, kind of going forth from the spirit to the to the physical reasoning, to the spirit, to the physical, natural reasoning. It's not a bad thing. It just happens until that's washed out of us. Joe, you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption whereby we crab, cry, Abba, Father. You've got your Father living in you. You've got Jesus living in you. You've got the Holy Spirit not only around you, but living in you. We are pretty much covered. Now, the key is our minds got to see it, and we have to allow God to take charge of our life. We've been running our life, and it's okay. We, we've done pretty good. You're still alive, but now we're letting God run our life, and it takes a while for God to get you to let go of the steering wheel and really be led by the Spirit. You're never going to be led by the Spirit if you don't say, God, take the wheel, guide me, instead of me knowing what I believe you want me to do and just doing it and be blessed by that. But I want you to guide my steps just to have more fun. Even if all you're doing is going down the library to pick out a book. You see, it doesn't matter. Make it an adventure with God. Your job is to drop seed, to plant seed. Go by with a little watering trough and water Hey, everybody, we're having a Christmas party. Our theme is the birth of Christ, not presents. Bring a scripture, a prayer, and we'll just bless you. Get yourself a great big, huge Santa sack and get all of these really good, semi-good gifts, not these huge gifts. Throw them all in a sack and then get the family together and have them all reach in and pick out some of their Christmas presents. And they're all good. They're not bad. I mean, instead of everybody going after the present and doing all that, I think families need to get together and start celebrating around Christ. Can you say amen? And, pour, and just make it simple. Don't try to overdo it. Don't have so much food you can't even rest. It's your own Christmas party. You see, try to arrange things, because if we're led by the Spirit... You don't get tired. You just get a lot done. Really, I know that. Now, does that happen all the time? <laughs> With me, God, we're, we're learning. Hello. There's different realms God wants to take us all to, but how hungry are you to get to know and want to have that? How many people do? Remember, the gesture and the verbiage tells God you really mean it. Anybody that can think they want to. All right, say amen. So point one, church, we have God living in us. If we do, then we need to develop a good prayer life. Without that, especially in the end times, you are going to crumble. I watched a really good ministry. Actually, I watched at least eight good ministries here in the last couple, several years, maybe three years. Crumble. Because they personally had no prayer life. My wife and I have a good prayer life together. Without a good prayer life, it doesn't bring God into the foundation. And then eventually Satan will find where there's a crack in your marriage or your foundation. And he will go after it. So be wise enough to present yourself God on a daily basis so he fixes your cracks. Can you say amen? And all your weaknesses 
and you present yourself, and he lines out your day so that you become untouchable, invisible, unshakable, walking with Christ. Can someone say amen? amen? We have the word and the promise of God, but it takes guidance and direction so that we get our hands and walk in those things. Can you say amen? The Spirit gives us the hows and how to work and apply it. Shows us the whens, the wheres. We need that detail. You're going to go out and save the world. Okay. Uh, where am I going to start? What am I going to do? Now, if you start answering that, you're guessing. Remember, God is asking you to do something. You'll know it's God. And he'll show you how to do it. And the Holy Spirit will be there marking you out with it. Don't panic. Just follow God. Love him. Just get enveloped in him. Amen? So listen. The Holy Spirit works with the word together. You got to be in the word. The Holy Spirit needs the word to work with something. And the word only works with the spirit. They're a combination. So the Holy Spirit works with the word and gives us specific instructions of things to do, how to do them, and how to enjoy our life. Did you know God wants you to enjoy your life? Have enough time where you can laugh? You can do what you want to do? You're not so burdened down? Now, if I described a little bit of you, I'm not putting you down. Find out where the area that you need to be led by the Spirit more so that your days are not filled with everything except God. Let's look at an example. How many know we need to be led by the Spirit? If you'll quickly go, to me, go with me to Acts chapter 8. Remember Philip the evangelist? Uh, I'll just tell you, that it's 26 through 30, and it says that an angel came to Philip and told him, Go down to Joppa. Okay? So here an angel is guiding. Angels guide too. Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise, go toward the south around the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is desert. And he just obeyed. He went. Now, the Holy Spirit's with him, right? Can you say amen? He's following God. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, someone that's been unicized. We'll talk about that later. And of great authority, actually one of the second in command to Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all his, her treasury and come to Jerusalem to worship, to give homage to God, and was returning and sitting in his chariot, was reading the prophet Isaiah. And then the spirit said to Philip, The Holy Spirit told Philip, all right, you see that guy over there? Go down there and talk to him. Now, you could be at the store and something in your heart saying, you need to turn around and dress that person next to you. Oh, God, come on. Is that you, God? Show me a sign of that. And then you turn around and suddenly you just know what to say. This is God. The Spirit said to Philip, you get down there. Now, just to make a long story short, this guy was the second in command, head of all the money in Ethiopia. If you read the background and the history of Ethiopia, they were one of the first Christian churches in Africa to explode. They had revival. Why? Because this guy kept born again, and he took the good news to the Candace, the queen of Ethiopia, and she declared Christianity to be the nation's Religion, or to receive Christ. And they build great big word. They still have one of the original translations of the Bible there. Hello? Just through Philip obeying the Spirit of God. Now, whose life can you change by being led by the Spirit? Whose life has been changed? Lord, lead me by your Spirit. Can you say Amen. And so get a chance to read it. Finally, our last point. I want to be an instrument of God. Make me an instrument 
an instrument of worship. I lift up my hands to you, Lord, right? Make us a symphony, a symphony of worship. We lift up our voice to the Lord. Amen. Matthew 5, look at this, verse 29 and 30 says, this is something for us to realize. Phone going off, so I'm dancing with it. If your right eye, this is, I want to put it out this way. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it far from you. It's more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. Now, this is Jesus talking. Then he says, and if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, cast it far from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for you and your whole body go to hell. Now, he's not talking about seriously plucking out your eyes and cut off your arm. What does your eyes do? They see. If all you see is problems all the time, be better just not to see at all. Cast that from you, not pluck your eyes really out. Remember, he's teaching Jewish metaphors. Okay, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Then he says, if your hand causes you to sin, do what? Cut it off. What does hands do? They do something. See something, do something. See something, do something. I, I bet if he went on, he says, and which of you having ears? But he, he left them out, didn't he? He wasn't talking literal. He was talking about don't waste your sight. Don't waste your doing on things that cause you to be away from God. Say amen. Now you got the deep meaning of that. Thank you, Pastor. K no, help. thank the Holy Spirit. Drop down to Romans 6, please. Let's look at it differently. Romans 6, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. Everyone say amen. amen. Who do we have sin... In us, God, right? But in our body, we have a thing called sin. So our job is to let, not let it take control. How's your prayer life? Do you have a prayer life? You, if you don't pray, you're letting sin in you take control. And it will turn you into, I don't know. It's never good to leave a child by themselves. Don't let sin reign. Why? That you should obey its lust. All your body, flesh does is lust. It's never happy. So don't try to run out into the world. Try to find yourself. You'll find yourself only in Jesus. And do not present your members. See the word present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. But present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, your members as instruments of righteousness. Remember, we're studying how to be an instrument of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion. In other words, you can stop it now. You can stop yourself from allowing yourself to be a boob. Hello? Amen. A mistake somewhere going to happen. Getting upset. Not get, getting out of balance. There's one that Christians fall to all the time. Are you doing too much and your family suffers? Or are you working too hard? You're suffering. Make sure you ask God to get in there and line up some balance for you. Say amen. Now, I can easily encourage you, but I have to do the same thing. I'm not immune. And finishing. Point one, church, we are the body of Christ in the earth, the salt and the light. What do our eyes do? What do our hands do? We are to be instruments for God. Say amen. Two, we are to meet with God, surrender ourselves to God daily so he can get everything in our life phased up, tuned in, tuned up, and in control. 
if you don't present yourself to God, your spirit man is going to become weak. God's still in there, but you got everything else piled on it. Third, we are ambassadors, ones who speaks for, represents of the kingdom of God. We who are of God should be under the authority of Jesus Christ and should be directed by our guide, tutor, and coach by the Holy Spirit. That's how you get things done. Get up in the morning, present yourself to God, have them tune you in, tune you up, ask God to guide out your steps, and during your day, something wonderful will happen, if not all about the day. Have you ever had a perfect day? I have, where God has led the way and done what he wanted done, and I fulfilled everything he's asked me to do. Why? Because he was leading the way, and I was just following him. Three people got saved. We got made a lot of money. I was with another brother, and I was trying to tell him, you can walk with God in the spirit, and your days can be good. You just got a master walking and listening. He who listens to me shall dwell safely and be unafraid of evil. If you got something out of that this morning, would you give the Lord a hand clap?